I think it's about time that I give you all an update on my garden. And I wanted to start with the cauliflower because I just picked a couple, as you can see. So when you're growing white cauliflower, it's suggested that you take the leaves as they're growing and starting to develop and you tie them over the cauliflower itself or the sun will dye it yellow. Well, here's two that got untied and that I missed and you can see they're yellow. Not too bad. So it's more for just like looks. It's not gonna hurt you. You can still eat it this way. It's just not gonna be that pure white color that people prefer. If you're cool with that, that's fine. You can leave it. But since I plan on selling a lot of these, I am gonna have to go up there and tie the rest of them. I cut off the greens and I gave that to my chickens. We're gonna eat this and now let's go up and check on the rest of the garden. Got my rubber bands and we're ready to go. I have stuff planted everywhere. Oh, there's the enemy. The rabbits have been trying to eat everything. No, don't run towards the garden. Anyways, I only live on about slightly more than an acre and I sell what I grow. So I have to get creative and try to make a lot of spaces to grow everything. And I do use a lot of grow bags too, which has really been helpful, but I'm lucky because up in this little field near my house, we just call it the meadow, is where I was able to put a lot of my stuff this year. So let's take a look at it. The broccoli and cauliflower, that's an early season crop. They like it cool. So those are some of the first things I planted. And I do have a video on that, so check that one out. And look how big they're getting. They're gonna be ready very soon. Look at that one. Now today was really, really hot, which kind of made me nervous because since these plants don't like it hot, you're at risk of them bolting. Like you can see this, this one got a little bit damaged. And yes, this is an orange variety. So this one is supposed to look like that. And then there's a white variety. So we're actually in a pretty bad drought right now. It's been a couple weeks since we got rain. And the last time we even got rain, it was just like a little drizzle. It didn't do much to help at all. And it's really unfortunate because over the winter we got so much rain that we didn't need and there was just constant mud everywhere and it was awful. But now that it's spring and growing season and we actually need the rain, it's nowhere to be found. So it's been a struggle. It's been a lot of work for me trying to water all this stuff and keep it alive by hand. But despite all that, most of the stuff is doing okay. So I'm grateful for that. Here's the peppers. You can see that they've doubled in size since the last time I showed you. And I have all kinds. I have sweet bell peppers. I have all different kinds of hot peppers, banana peppers. And the eggplant is finally taking off too. For the longest time, it was really small because we've had so many cold nights. It's been such a weird spring, but they're starting to look a little bit better. I do have to stake the rest of them up because as they grow and they start to form eggplants on them, they're gonna get really heavy and fall over and we don't want that. So you have to give them support. Here's some more peppers. And look how quickly the squash and zucchini are taking off. I just planted them a couple weeks ago and look how big they're getting. Now this plant does grow pretty quickly, but it always amazes me each year. I mean, look at that, they look great. One thing that's really stressing me out though is I sell bouquets along with the produce and they were really, really popular last year and I already have customers asking about it. But with this drought, I really don't know if I'm gonna be able to sell any this year, which is really sad because I don't like to let anyone down and I also really enjoyed making them. But so many flowers either died even with watering or just won't sprout, won't germinate no matter how many times I go and water them. And way back in February, I did start a ton of flowers inside under my grow lights and then I planted them and someone accidentally weed whacked them. So that was another devastating blow. So this spring has not been without its challenges, but that's just part of farming. You gotta face adversity a lot and find a way to get through it and keep going. It's really not an easy job, but I guess some of us are crazy enough to wanna give it a try. So the beans have been another issue because rabbits won't stop eating the beans. You don't know how many times I've had to replant those. The cabbage, on the other hand, though, is looking great. Look, it's gonna start to form a head. That's really exciting. I also have some red cabbage. And here's the corn. The corn's doing pretty well. That's a little bit more hardy, at least against drought, but not invincible. You can see it's starting to yellow a little bit. It's needing more water. That can also be a sign of low nitrogen, but I already put a lot of that down, so they should be fine. I've been planting sweet corn every two weeks, and you can see the latest ones are starting to come up. And in case you haven't seen my other videos, the reason why I have this black plastic down everywhere is for a few reasons. One, it'll help keep the weeds away, which a few still try to come through. And it'll also keep the ground warm, which will help things germinate faster. 
The cucumbers are yet another one that I've had to replant so many times this season, but it looks like they're finally starting to be okay. I did some pickling ones and some slicing varieties and lots and lots of different heirloom tomatoes. I was very behind on planting these. Okay, technically I wasn't, but with my standards, because I like to start things early, I was behind. But I mean, what can you do? It's been a very weird spring and it was too cold to plant them. It's kind of a scary profession if you think about it because you're at the mercy of mother nature and mother nature is gonna win every time. But we try our best to overcome all that. And even though there's a lot of stress that can come along with it, once something does go right, the reward is so worth it. And over here I have acorn squash, spaghetti squash, butternut squash. That's not good. That bug's gonna have to go. I also have patty pan squash, gold zucchini, moon and stars watermelon, which is an heirloom variety. It is seeded, but it's really pretty because it's a dark watermelon with yellow stars all over it, like little yellow polka dots, which is why it gets its name. And even the vines get the polka dot on it. And you can see this one's starting to. And I also have seedless watermelon, including orange seedless. The watermelon was doing kind of rough for a while there because it's been so dry, but I think I finally have it recovering. Most of them at least. And of course, cantaloupe. I am not a fan of cantaloupe. I don't like how it smells. I don't like how it tastes, but I plant a lot of it because my customers love it. And so do my chickens for that matter. And close to a week ago, I planted pumpkins and gourds. They have not sprouted yet, but they should any day now. So now we're gonna head back towards the house and I'll show you the other stuff that I have. So if you've seen my other videos, you probably already know that this is my best friend, Eva, AKA Monkey. She's my little farm dog. She always wants to help. She sees a bee. Don't catch the bee, Eva. She's a sight hound. She can't help it. It's in her instinct to chase movement. Here are some more beans. I tried just planting them everywhere. So that way if the rabbits find one patch, I'm, I'll have backups. Got some roses. And then I have a couple different raised beds with carrots. I grow rainbow carrots. So I have your traditional orange and I also have white ones, purple ones, and yellow ones. And it looks so pretty when you pick them all and put them in a bundle together. And yes, I do have a video on how to plant carrots, beets, onions, pretty much all the stuff that I've been growing. I have videos on that. So make sure you check them out if you want to grow them too. Here's some arugula. I just picked a ton of salad greens the other day. So I replanted them, I have more growing back, but here's a little bit left that I didn't get yet. And the beets are doing really, really well. It won't be long until they start to form the actual beet itself. And you can eat the greens too, they're really, really healthy for you. So when you do harvest them, use the whole plant. I'm doing red ones and gold. You can actually see the start of the beet right there. I'm also growing sweet candy onions and red onions. And then here's my bean tower, this is fairly new. I'm hoping that since it's so tall, the rabbits won't be able to ruin these beans. I have traditional green beans in here. I also have purple ones and dragon's tongue beans. And I've never done them in this tower method before, so we'll see how it does this year. And here's a look at some of the flowers that have survived so far. All right, I'm gonna put Eva back in the house because I don't want her near the pool without supervision because she loves swimming. She's sad though, she wants to come. But I'll be back for her in just a minute. These are pincushion flowers. They smell like baby powder. They're so cool. Recently planted some bee balm. That also smells really good. This is new. It's developing a bit slow because it's been so hot and dry, but it's getting there. Lavender. There goes another one. So I'm gonna be real with you guys. I hope I don't offend anyone, but this is just how I feel. I understand why Mr. McGregor in the Peter Cottontail movie hated the rabbits. There, I said it. I said what I said. And if you grow food, you would understand. Trust me, you would understand completely because I did not feel that way until I started raising stuff. And especially once you raise stuff to sell, it puts a whole other level of pressure on you. Because how can you grow food for your family and your community when the rabbits keep stealing it? But anyways, here's some romaine lettuce. The lettuce has also really been struggling this year. Sweet potatoes were just recently planted. Yes, I do have a video on that. They're doing pretty good. I do them in grow bags because there's a lot of rocks in my area. So it's just so much easier to grow them in here because that way I don't have to worry about them getting stuck on the rocks and not forming properly because of that. And it'll be easier to dig them up. And with my limited space, like I mentioned earlier, grow bags really help with stuff like this. And then here's my potatoes. I got white potatoes, reds and blues, and they're doing really, really well. So I'm so grateful for that. 
I mean, look at all of them. Strawberries. Oh, and here's my chickens. I love them so much. I have a lot of chicken videos. Let's go into their house. They help me out a lot because I use their manure as compost for all these vegetables. So thank you, chickens. Oh, and they help because I hate to waste stuff. So anytime I pick something that I can't sell or that I don't need, I give it to them. Here's some of their eggs. Mimosa wants to hatch some, but there's no rooster. So unfortunately, she's wasting her time, but she doesn't understand that. Oh, and here's my lettuce hanging basket. I have it in the chicken pen. That way it's hanging so they can't ruin it. But whenever they want a lettuce treat, I'll just pull some out, toss it in, and it'll grow right back. If you want to know how to make this yourself, check out my big chicken coop upgrade video. I also planted them lots of herbs. Here's some more carrots and some more beets. So I've been selling produce for the past three years. It's funny, like my garden journey actually started out with me just growing pumpkins. We would carve pumpkins every year like most families do. And I would save a couple seeds from the ones we would carve and I would be like, oh, it'll be fun to plant pumpkins. And I did and the rest was history. I thought that was so much fun that every year I would try growing something new and it just exploded from there. And it got to the point where I couldn't possibly eat all that stuff myself. So I was like, I need to start selling this. So. COVID year, like literally right when COVID hit hard and all those shutdowns were taking place. I just went to the backyard because the neighbors are out staring at me and I'm sure they think I'm talking to myself, but you know what, whatever. But anyways, when all those shutdowns were taking place and unfortunately a lot of businesses had to shut their doors temporarily, I was lucky enough that I was just opening mine. And since I sold food, which is obviously essential, it did not affect me. So I was able to continue with that. So I was very blessed in that sense. And a lot of people, since they wanted to avoid stores, started coming to my roadside farm stand. And since I don't live on a busy main road, my best friend became my business partner because he had the perfect location for it. So we had to stand at his house. Well, unfortunately, this past winter, well, unfortunately for me, I'm sure it's exciting for him. So that's good. But unfortunately for me, he moved out of state. So now I can't use that property anymore for the roadside stand. So now this year, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a bit of a learning curve for me. I'm gonna have to do it differently because I didn't wanna give up. So I'm gonna try to do pre-orders instead where people order directly from me and a few times a week, I'll put together local bundles for them or they could place an order for just whatever's in season that they want and they'll meet me somewhere in town and pick it up. I'm really, really hoping that it goes well. I've advertised it already and a lot of people have been showing support, but we'll see if they actually follow through. Fingers crossed that they do. And I also plan on offering baked goods this year as well. And my mom was nice enough to become my business partner for it. So that way I don't have to do it all alone because aside from this, which takes up a ton of my time, I also work full time as a manager at a farm store. So it just physically would not be possible to do this all alone. So that was really awesome that my mom was able to join me in this venture. But yeah, I mean, life is gonna throw curveballs at you and you just need to tackle it. Don't give up at the first curveball because maybe this will be a blessing in disguise. Maybe it'll work out better for us because the past two years in particular, People were definitely stealing from that farm stand and that's not cool because I work really, really, really hard for the stuff that I grow and you don't make that much profit off of produce to begin with, especially when you consider all your labor and all the hours that goes into it. So for people to do that, it was just really low. Cause like we're all struggling right now and if everyone were to steal, that would put me out of business. And I know it can't just be me, it's happening to other farmers in the area too. And for some people that's their only job, their only source of income. So that's really scary for them when it happens to them. Like we're all just trying to make a living too. Like if people think they shouldn't pay us, that would be like if we went to those people's jobs and said, hey, you should be working for free or hey, you should take a pay cut. They wouldn't like how that feels, so they shouldn't do it to farmers. But that's the end of my rant. I wanted to show you one more cool thing that I noticed because I was up in the garden a little bit ago, the big one that I was just showing you because the rabbits returned, I had to chase them out. But I noticed some baby yellow squash forming, so I'm gonna show you that. Actually, that's my gold zucchini. There's some green zucchini forming too. That's so exciting. It's just so cool to think that a seed turns into that. Like it's, it's just so cool. So that's it for now. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update to show you how it was going, give you a little bit of a backstory on everything. Don't forget to check out my other videos on how to grow this stuff so that way you can do it too if you'd like. I think it's really important for people to know how to grow their own food. It is a lot of hard work, but if you're doing it on a small scale just for yourself and your family, it will be easier. 
it's a really good learning experience. It's good for your health because you're out in the sunshine, you're being physical, and fresh food is so much healthier for you. And if you're not able to do it yourself, please reach out to a local farmer in your community and buy from them this summer because I promise you won't regret it. You're paying for such better quality, and like I said, it's going to be better for you and better for your local economy. And stay tuned for updates on the garden. Now I'm going to go get Eva and take her swimming because she's been dying to get in. Want to go swimming? Want to go swimming? Want to get in? She's got to get her pool toy. Her favorite thing to do is to throw stuff in the, well, for us to throw stuff in the water and then she'll bring it back to us. And obviously we can't do that forever, even though she would love to. But it's funny because it gets to the point where when you finally stop because you need her to take a break, she will cry. So then you just got to distract her so she gets over it. Because, monkey, you can't swim forever. And I have to be careful when I throw it because if I were to throw this from here just to the other side, she can jump so far she would go smack into the concrete. So I can only throw it into the middle so that way it's safe. Look how excited she gets. Loch Ness Monkey. 